everyone. Welcome. I'm finally live and we're ready to unravel the last four, oh good, you can see my hand down there, the last four skeins from our sock length special too. Um, oh, oh. oh, okay. I thought there was a message about the, uh, the stream health, but no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me and for being patient with the delays. Um, I, you know, I can, I can power through and stream through a lot of things, but having my two kids run around without someone else to keep an eye on them would be a little difficult. And so we just had two snow days, but now, yay, <laughs> they have school tomorrow and I'm here and I'm ready with my pack of Nitty Nodies to do some unraveling with you guys. So that way, hopefully sometime next week, I can finish up the overall uh, recap of the whole sock length special two weeks so you guys can take pictures of the each blank and then the yarn that it turned into so you can see how everything turned out. But yeah, I hope that you guys are all finding finding this okay. I am going to aha send this out on the Facebook page and then I'll get started. But yeah, I missed all you guys. <laughs> so I'm really, really glad to see you. And of course, things are loading slow, but go. There we go. Posted. And paved away. Yeah, so now got to... All right. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you guys could join. And oh, Nitpix is having a huge, huge sale. Uh, they're all their, not all, but a bunch of their soft yarns are up to 40% off. I just bought some bare capra yarn, um, which is a merino cashmere blend that is DK weight, so not even sock yarn really. Um, I bought that for 40% off. I was so stoked. But sock blanks are actually 20% off right now, which is a really good deal. Better than the bulk discount that I usually do. Oh, welcome. I'm glad you're able to join on the first live stream. Oh, hopefully. Um, yeah, if, if you guys know, start noticing a lot of issues with the stream health, let me know. Um, but anyway, yeah, Netflix is having a huge sale. My affiliate links are in the video description. There's also links to some of the other products I use for dyeing these blanks to Amazon and whatever. Um, and so, yeah, so all, all that should be, should be there and should be very, very helpful. But let's get started with this unraveling. And of course I cannot see which, there we go. <laughs> I wanted to turn off the correct camera. All right, so these are the four blanks that we have left. Um, you can't buy any more yarn. Sorry, I'm a little bit of a stash enabler. Uh, <laughs> also, look, that's how I make part of my income. <laughs> so it's why I tell you guys about all the sales. But um, if other ways that you can support me that don't involve buying more yarn is that if you see the little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat, that's for Super Chat. And it's sort of like a tip jar. So if you've been enjoying all the content that you see from me and you feel like leaving a Super Chat, you, your message will be like highlighted in a bold color and might show up longer than a normal chat message. But it's just also a nice way to help me out. But again, I know many of you have contributed over the sock length special too, and I, I appreciate everyone's support. Um, yes, the knit pick sock blanks are 20% off. So instead of being $19.99, they are, I guess, I think that they're $15.99. Um, at one point I did the math wrong about the percentage, but they're under the 20% off category. I shared a link to the sale on Facebook, but if you go through any of my links to the main page, you can get to the, well, actually even the sock blanks link that I shared at the beginning of the chat. It'll show you the nice sale. So I think that 
<laughs> you watch the replays normally on 2x speed, so this seems slow. <laughs> I tried watching, after people said they did that, I tried watching myself at like one and a half, and I just was cracking up. All right, so I think I'm going to start with an easy one to unravel. So tonight we have two of the nitpick strobe likes that I dyed. We have this one that I did sort of a low immersion dyeing technique with Kool-Aid. First I sort of over dyed it this pale blue and then I sprinkled on Kool-Aid in a gradient but the way that it turned out you actually get all these little itty bitty specks which are really really cool. And then um, I have one more Stroll blank, which is this one with the DNA stencil, and I'll do that one, I think, last. These two blanks are homemade blanks. One is, uh, I think, Cash Sock MCN from Wool to Die For, and it's a double-stranded blank I made in the round on my Loops and Threads knitting machine. And this was, I believe, Knit Picks Hawthorne yarn, which is 20% nylon, 80% uh, superwash wool. And it's a double-stranded blank I knit on one of my Singer knitting machines in the round. Um, oh, all right. But let's start with, with this one. And if you're not familiar with my Nitty Notties, um, I have some videos on the channel, which of course I never put in these descriptions, but I have videos on the channel about all the parts that I use to make them. And so this is a 24 inch bar in the middle. Um, and this is half inch PVC pipe, I believe. But Normally with the Nitty Notty, if I'm winding just one skein of yarn, I'll have it in this sort of configuration where the two ends are perpendicular to one another. However, since I'm going to be, all these are double strands, I'm using the a double length bar from what I normally might use. And so that way I can wrap the two strands around each side. And if you guys are new to sock blanks, basically they're peanut pieces of fabric that we dye to then, let's see which end I need to start from. Basically, they're pre-knit pieces of fabric that we dye so then we can unravel and turn into something else. And you can unravel them like I'm doing into skeins or you can actually knit like two socks at a time from the blank directly. So you really don't have to unravel them. But in this whole sock blank special too, I was trying to do a combination of homemade blanks and commercial blanks to show that you can get beautiful results either way. Uh, the one caveat with this good results either way, and I've unraveled a lot of homemade blanks already. This one, because I use so many sprinkles, is still a little stiff, so I'm not sure if that means I'll struggle with it more when I unravel it, but we'll get there when we get there. You should, you should start dyeing yarn. It is so easy. The other thing about doing these sock blanks is that you end up with two identical skeins of yarn. So I'm not sure if you can see that little pink speck. Here we go. That was that came from one of the sprinkles that I used. Oh, so after the Kool-Aid, I used the rainbow nonpareil sprinkles on here for multicolored specks. But the specks will be the same color and the same place on each of the yarns. And so that's just something that's really, really cool <laughs> and really fun. But so yeah, the, the stroll blanks unravel really easily. So I just sort of wrap around and around and around. And, you know, with the exception of the rainbow sprinkles, we've got this pale blue that otherwise, that is pretty consistent. I mean, it's very, very pale, but I mean, a lot of the goal and what we were going for in the, with these this was from the, the Sprinkles and Speckles live stream. So we want to have a speckled yarn, but you don't always, you might end up with something a little more modeled than obvious specks, but you don't necessarily always get super, super speckles, unless that's what you're going for. <laughs> but ee, oh, I was so sad to have to put this off, but I am so happy to be unraveling now. I actually, I unraveled a blank that I previewed in some of these episodes and I shared a picture on Instagram and Facebook today of a blank that was not part of the sock blank special that is gonna be in a future Dye Pot Weekly episode. And I did that all by itself. I felt a little bad <laughs> that I wasn't doing it in a stream, but 
Oh, this is... Oh, whoops, and there goes my dryer. So, so far, what we're getting here are these really itty bitty tiny rainbow specks from these rainbow non -prills. We're starting to get some speckles from the Kool-Aid that I sprinkled on top of the yarn. But so far, I mean, and it'll get a lot more intense once we get towards the end of the blank where it was heavier, but whoo, this is really, really pretty as is. I almost would do, wow, because the, the nonpareil specks on here are just tiny because each sprinkle landed on multiple stitches. So instead of having a longer splotch that you might have if you're just doing this on a, skein, a whole skein of yarn, you end up getting even a little smaller. I wish, yeah, I guess those kind of show up. Itty bitty specs. Uh, you've gone to the nitpicks four times a day to look at all the great stuff on sale. So far you resisted. Well, the sale goes until next week. I think it goes until the 22nd. Stroll fingering the in non-blank form is on sale as well. I think it's only 10% off for the individual skeins. But unfortunately, it's still out of stock. But the, the restock for the stroll was pushed back until the, it was originally estimated to come out on the 12th and it's been pushed back to the 21st. So fingers crossed that that'll be in soon. Although I haven't refreshed on it in since this morning. I had been refreshing on this bare swish and stroll and things multiple times, multiple times a day. Okay, so now, uh, again, I'm not sure if it'll be really apparent that we're starting to get more specs from the, the great Kool-Aid, but we're gonna end up with, I think, I mean, in some places the, the gradient won't be clear because we've got, because of the way it was uh, wrinkled, you know, we've got a heavier, oh, you can't see that, we've got, there we go, a more heavily striped area in there, but it's fun. Do I spin fibers? Yes. And sometimes I do live spin alongs as well. I haven't done one since one that I finished up in January, but I hope to do another one soon. I dyed some fiber with writ dyes in a live, I think it was in a live stream recently. And so I would really like to spin that as a spin along and work on, I did a lot of thicker yarns, a lot of worsted weight plus yarns um, around for the sock blank special and stuff. And so I want to start trying to get thinner, thinner singles again. So I might work on that and do some spins and chats. Uh, can you self dye yarn for amigurumi projects? Oh, absolutely, Linda. Absolutely. I mean, frequently, actually, I started keeping a lot of the bare palette yarn on hand because I like using that to make tiny little creatures. And I started keeping it on hand because I knew I could dye and I have all these mini skeins I dyed because I needed a color for a specific project. One of my most popular designs until I did the DNA hats was is this little, little bumblebee that I designed. And I dyed the yellow yarn for that because I realized I didn't have a good yellow in my stash and I had this idea for this bumblebee and <laughs> Yeah, so I just dyed some yellow yarn for it. And I think that on the pattern page, I talk a tiny bit about the dyeing of the yarn. Um, and I would link to that, but YouTube has been giving us some issues when I link to things on my website. So uh, maybe I'll, if I remember, I'll add the bee, the bee pattern, but I think it's called like bzz, a bumblebee plushie or something like that, but oh. This, so these grape sections, even though, I mean, the, the wrong side, there's more color on the right side of the purple than the wrong side, which we know leads to some of the, the splotches that you get from, from unraveling these blanks. But these specks are just so itty bitty, way, way, way smaller than, say, some of the specks that we would get with doing the color mist sprays are all over, all over or something. I mean, I guess in some places, the speckles are a little, are getting a bit larger like those. Um, so maybe I spoke too soon, but we've got, because there's some specks that were from like a single grain 
of the Kool-Aid, which I think was mostly grape, but there might have been some cherry Kool-Aid in there as well. But since the, they just they, the color just struck so fast, giving us these discrete specks, even like on, that you can see on the surface of the blank. Palette is awesome. You have every color. Every color? Wow. Did you buy one of the like complete palette collection things that they have? Oh, I have a ton of palette because they used to have some of their yarn kits go on super clearance. And so back when I, I thought, I was like, ooh, I'm doing all these projects. It's useful to have a ton of stuff in my stash. I should buy these kits that are on clearance to get, because I like all these colors. But the problem is that a little palette goes a long way. <laughs> so I have a ton of colors. The speckles are purple. Uh, oh, I guess I don't have some nearby. Yeah, the colors don't always read super well on the camera, but they really are a grape. For all I thought that there was some red in there, and maybe, I mean, there are some red specks, but that could be just from the sprinkles. The, the purple specks are really, you know, a deep, like grape Kool-Aid, grape soda sort of color. How thick can you get yarn on a spinning wheel? Uh, pretty bulky. I, I forget, if you search for the cloudy rainbow hat, then I'll probably, that probably says is one of the, the yarn that I spun for that is probably one of the thickest that I've done. I forget what the WPI of it was, but I do have a, so my, my spinning wheel is a Kromsky Fantasia and I have the jumbo orifice kit for it that is helpful for when you're spinning a bigger yarn because it's some otherwise like the, place where the yarn usually goes through, I don't know what it's called, um, I guess maybe the orifice, uh, with a really thick yarn, it just wouldn't be able to fit and would get stuck. So this you sort of attach to that. Uh, uh, you collect them over the, the, that's smart for collecting the pallet yarns over the year, especially because, you know, in, in October, orange and black go on sale, in February, red, and then we just had the big green sale. Uh, I picked up, <laughs> I picked up a lot of mint colored yarn. <laughs> I was like, oh, I just wanted to over dye all of it. I think that I'm definitely going to be having some mint chocolate chip dye themed episode at some point because <laughs> I just want to speckle all of this gorgeous mint colored yarn. <laughs> Spinning is really, really relaxing. I, I find the spinning wheel a lot. I mean, I haven't used my drop spindle pretty much since I got my, my spinning wheel. I mean, I think I finished up the last project I was doing on the drop spindle, but the, I find the wheel significantly easier to use. But um, even though it is easier to use, it, I mean, it's a lot more expensive than a drop spindle. So I think starting on the drop spindle was really helpful. But yeah, and I just started sewing once we moved here. I guess it was Halloween two years ago. I bought a sewing machine so I can make a costume for Lucas. Uh, and then, well, last summer, Keith took the boys to the Cape for to Cape Cod for the weekend. And I was home on my own. And so I started working on a quilt for Lucas. And my goal was to have the whole thing pieced together because if I could do that, then I could work on the quilting and stuff slowly, even with the kids here, because it would be easier to like not get messed up. Well, I accidentally shot soda all over the whole thing and it needed to dry and I had to wash pieces. And so that was a little disaster, but it's been sitting all cut, ready to start sewing for yeah a while. So hopefully I'll pick that up at some point this summer. You're getting a new whirl for your birthday. Oh yeah, I got, um, so the whirl that came with the Kromsky, Kromsky Fantasia, I think has ratios of one to five and one to eight. And the ratios are, if you, if your wheel does one rotation, then th you'll get like five revolutions um, for the twist in the yarn. So the faster, a quote, faster whirl will give you, um, you know, you can get more twist faster but I think a lot of it is 
preference based and I'm not up on a lot of spinning terminology. But I need, I want to take some crafty classes actually. Because I know that there's a lot that I could learn to improve. But for now, I find it soothing and I sort of let the fibers speak to me to decide what they want to become, and that's fun. Yet, sew it up. I had it. So, because I have a habit because of the kids that I use these covered bottles, and you guys have seen me use them sometimes. And like, I don't know what it was that happened, but I dropped it and something about the carbonation, it just made the top, maybe the lid wasn't on all the way and it shot from basically where I'm sitting across to the other wall of the room and entirely across my project. Woohoo! Yeah, I think that I use the one to 10 a lot. I think that that's my comfort zone in terms of the worlds. Have I ever processed my own world? No or process my own world, my own fiber. No, I haven't. I have, I mentioned, and I'll give a little peek. You can see it's the gradient is subtle, but it's there. We're getting more and more of the grape as we go down. Uh, I, I actually, I own Carter's and I, we've been saving fur from my dog with the thought of maybe I would blend it with something and spin it at some point because I'd have to blend it because the staple length is only, you know, maybe between two to three inches and that's a bit too short for me. Um, I'm not that good of a, of a spinner to do that. So, uh, but that that's the plan for someday. And so I'd need to prep that. But yeah, mo so mostly I, I buy like pre-prepared fiber, but then I dye it myself and I got into spinning because since I was dyeing yarn, I wanted to explore a whole new way to add color to yarn by spinning the yarn. And so by dyeing roving and spinning it, I knew that it would just add another layer to what I could do. So your Hobby Lobby has free spinning classes? Oh, cool. Oh, you're making a quilt right now? Yes. And here's another close up of of the speckles. Sometimes it's not, the webcam doesn't do a good job at refocusing. It's supposed to be auto-focus. And I've noticed on replays that sometimes it'll refocus. But this is one of the reasons why I want to, I shoot recaps after my live streams because I know that uh, you guys can't always get the best sense of color and everything. So while there are recaps with close-ups of all of the blanks that I dyed already, this last recap will be a slideshow set to music. I'm not planning on narrating it at all, but we'll show pictures. I mean, there, there'll be some title slides that will indicate what live stream things were dyed in, but maybe I'll show a picture of the dyeing process, the finished dried blank, um, and then some pictures of it unwound, unwound on the knitting naughty and then in skein form. Uh, so then you guys can get a good sense of all the beauty that we created in that sock length special week because we did 21 different blanks well i guess by we i mean i did but you guys were there while i did it <laughs> oh thank you yes yeah, spinning spinning is fun i mean before i'd only ever tried one wheel and i knew i wanted one and we i decided that since I had the drop spindle, I was like, okay, if I do a ton of spinning on this, then I can have a wheel. And yeah, so then, I, then when I ended up showing up for my 29th birthday, and that was exciting. Um, by showing up, I mean my Keith and my in-laws and his parents got it for me. Uh, so you'll notice that as I unravel everything, it's really, really crimped. Now you can knit from this directly, but because it will kind of all turn into sort of ramen noodles after when I take it off the Nitty Nani. I personally like to sort of wet the yarn to help it relax. So that way it can be stored without uh, sort of getting tangled. <laughs> are my skeins, um, so each of these blanks are 100 grams. So the skeins will each be 50. I didn't do any, I didn't make any 200 gram blanks but you could to then get two identical 100 gram 
skeins and that on the right side. I'm just quickly tying this off and then I'll hold it up to show you guys. So in general, in general, I am bad about adding extra ties, but I've been pretty good this time because since I've been taking yarns off the nitty knotty and I've been afraid that the ties would fall out because right now it's just tied with the, the loose end, I have been really trying to make sure to, uh, to add extra ties if I'm not going to let them dry while on the nitty knotty. But here is the gradient. So you can see that we get more and more and more of these purple specks. But overall, it's a very, very subtle yarn. Uh, no, so I'm dying, when these, since these are 100 gram blanks, I'm dying 250 gram skeins of yarn at a time. If I had a 200 gram blank that was double stranded, then that would be two 100 gram skeins at a time. But, and now, in case I take things out, where do I buy my fibers? Ah! I buy almost all of my yarn and rovings, so my fibers for spinning from Knit Picks. Uh, and I am taking pictures, which sometimes, ironically, and I can pop up this camera. Sometimes, oh, come on. There we go. Nope. Way blown out. Sometimes I can do this to sort of zoom in. It doesn't really help with the color, but you can see the speckled gradient really nicely because I can zoom in a bit further. You could crochet a six strand blank to, to tie. Um, maybe I've done that. Maybe I took, well, I did something similar. I took two ends, I crocheted it, folded that in half again, crocheted, fold that in half again, crocheted. And so that, that's a different, different experiment. And maybe if I hold this up here. Oh, there we go. Okay, on this camera, I can get closer and it'll focus for the gradient. But thank you guys. Okay, I think I will hopefully remember to snap pictures of all of these before, before I wet them, but just in case. I'm going to snap that and we're going to move on to the next one. Oof. Oh, oh, cool. Yeah, no, I, so most of the stuff and here is, um, here's the link to the, there's a bit of delay. So you got, oh, that's not the link. There's a bit of a delay. So you might see things show up in the chat before I do it. But the, the link is weird because that's my um, affiliate link through Nitpicks on their program goes through this site called ShareASale. Uh, but hi and welcome. We just did the, the first blank, which was one that I did with the great Kool-Aid in the speckles and sprinkles special. And so I guess what's harder to draw attention to are that, you know how tweed yarns usually have these different color nubs all the way through? Well, it doesn't have that texture, but since it's got these random rainbow colors all the way through, it makes it look a little, versus just speckled, look a little Tweed-esque, which is kind of fun. Uh, yeah, oh, I, yeah, I don't really know much about a cake wheel. I'd like to hear more about that. Ha ha. All right, next, all right, next let's do this one. This was the Knit Picks Hawthorne yarn, which is, I think it's a, it's a two-ply that's pretty lofty. So it's a nice springy kind of yarn. And this one, I used the, since it was done in the round, I used the Misto spray bottle to spray one side teal and then used all of the sprinkles to create sort of striped specks all the way through. But now, okay, so that's the, the wrong side. And I do have like a random extra little butterfly because I think that one side was longer than the other when I was making this, but okay, let's see. Did I pull through everything? No, not quite. All right, but 
So let's see. But again, you know, when we've got big splotches of color, they happen in the same spot. So that's cool. Well, you guys are from all over tonight. Welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah, on, on some of my homemade ones, there was one that because I wasn't exact when I divided my yarn into 50 gram skeins ahead of time, uh, I was like, oh, I don't want to cut this extra yard. But then when I started unraveling, I was like, oh, it's not quite even. But I think, I yeah, I it, it worked out. It'll work out. All right. So can we see? So this one, I think, will get some kind of gradient, but there'll be this consistent teal throughout. So I'm pretty excited to see how it goes. This is my first time dyeing Hawthorne. Oh, dear. Please tell me that I started at the correct end. Nope, I think I started at the wrong end. You know how I know? Because things, things start bunching up strangely and then, oh, all right. And then I start struggling. Okay, so I've got this butterfly here. Because <laughs> I think that while I was doing something, I accidentally untangled it. Okay, and that's pretty well matched up. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, sometimes after dyeing and everything, it's hard for me to tell where I drew yarn through the stitches versus like, so it's hard for me to tell which end I really started from. Okay, let's unravel a bit. Okay, that's probably and that's probably it. So the when when you start from the not the side that was the end of your homemade blank, sometimes it can get sort of caught. Now what I don't remember is if there's there's two things, two ways to do a homemade blank. One is to wind a center pole ball and then <laughs> so you wind your yarn into a center pole ball and you can hold both ends together while you make the blank. This does result in the yarns being twisted around each other, which can be sort of hard to separate while you're unraveling the blank. And well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> the, the other way that you can do it is by separating your yarn into 50 gram skeins first. So then, and what is... Yep, this is being kind of twisted. I wish I could remember what I did with this one. Uh, but you could split your yarn into 50, 250 gram skeins first and then do that and then it'll end up being less twisted. But right now this is awfully, awfully twisted. So I'll probably need to get my weighted thing. Oh, thanks for joining up. I'm glad you enjoy it. Thanks for asking questions. I love it. I really love it when you guys ask questions. And, but I don't love it when things are mega, mega twisty when I just got started. Here we go. Okay, I had to get like, it's not that bad. I just had to get into my rhythm. <laughs> the, it's funny, the fiber content, I mean, it's not merino. And I think that the type of nylon might be a little different as well, but the, uh, yeah, it's spun differently. So the yarn has a different feel to it, but I would use Hawthorne more. I'm not sure if it's available with bulk discounts or not, but yeah, so, so far, cause we've got this teal and black, we've got these black stuff. Uh, let me grab, ow. I have a bad hip <laughs> for goofy, goofy reasons. I slipped on a kid, like kitchen, play kitchen plate about a year ago. And sometimes then it complains when I get up. 
<laughs> this is the thing that's making me start to feel old. <laughs> oh, Linda, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. Oh. And if I do, I know that there's a lot of you on chat tonight. And if I miss a question at any point, feel free to ask again. So I do try to answer questions while we do these streams. But yeah, I mean, look at how, like how like, you know, the spots of the specs are in the same place. So when I say that the two skeins are identical, when you do some techniques like the sprinkles that are like really creating tiny dots of color, the speck on one skein might be bigger than the other, but the spot of the color will be in the same place. So, wait, I think I missed something about smileys. No, I know I'm not that old. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard of smileys. Um, I know I'm not that old. I just you know, having an aching hip <laughs> makes me feel like I'm old. Okay, so now we're getting into this. Um, oh, I guess we're finishing up the section that was with the rainbow nonpareil sprinkles and the teal. And we're heading into, oh, interesting. So I hadn't looked at the inside of this yet. But now if I look in, you can see that there is some teal on the wrong, like, so if you said, if this, if you called where I sprayed the teal, the right side on the inside of the other, on the wrong side with the sprinkles, there's some teal in there, um, which is giving us some teal throughout everything. It's just heavily in more areas than other. So it'll sort of, um, and some variegated yarns with like short patches of color, but in this case, because of the sprinkles, it's like, you know, there's like speckles that are like, in different patches of color. So it'll be really, really kind of cool knit up. And that where the colored specks are could actually, uh, they could pool a bit in a way that could be kind of cool. But we're now going into the purple sugar sprinkles. So I'm really curious how this overall gradient will look. Oh, Suzanne, thank you. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really, really appreciate it. That that really helps you guys. That this is making me feel better about the big yarn order that I placed today. I also got some Capretta, which I think I forget what percentage off it was. I think it may have been the Capretta yarn, um, which has some nylon or something in it as well. Uh, that I think was only twenty percent off, but. I was like, this is a good price and I want to play with more bases. So um, you would like to buy some cheap pastel wool to over dye and play with color. Um, that's why, well, I mean, I guess it was cheap because it was on sale. That's why I picked up some of the, and of course. Okay, so maybe this was a center pull ball because I'm getting a little twisted and therefore when it's twisted, then I start getting a little uneven on the way I'm wrapping. But the, sorry guys, I got distracted. Um, I, I, that's, I bought a bunch of pastel mint colored yarn from the Knit Picks Green Yarn Sale to over dye. Um, so that should be fun. I know you guys enjoy over dyeing. Um, I actually have some like big box store yarns to over dye as well at some point, but. How twisty are we? Yeah, we're getting a little twisty. Okay, I think I'm going to try untwisting this a bit, but let's take all of you. So I'm gonna sort of roll this up. Oh dear. Um, Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm, you guys know why I, that I'm hurt. So I am a Knit Picks affiliate now and I talk about them a lot because I do love their yarns, but I've also, even before I became an affiliate, but um, I'm also up for trying out a bunch of different yarns, brands and things as well. Um, what do you think a good color is to over dye a mustard yellow with? 
Well, Twiddle, um, I have on the channel, there's a dye pot weekly where I over dyed highlighter yellow and I over dyed it with both Wilton's violet and with Wilton's black. And both the colorways are stunning. So honestly, it depends on what you want. You could go, you could go for something more complimentary, like a green or something, but you could also try going um, with a lot of dye, going with something that could have a bit more of a punch just to see what would to see what would happen. Did I get? Oh. Okay, now I have the sound off on my laptop. Oh dear. Um, how's there another update ready to install? <laughs> but, uh, will you over dye green yarn with blues? What other colors would you use to dye over green? I mean, the, oh goodness, with the mint yarn, since mint, the mint color is a pastel, gosh, maybe I'll have to over dye one with orange just to show that like you can go sort of opposite. Um, and still have something that's really, not that orange is opposite, opposite of green, but um, oh yeah, so sometimes, especially when I'm moving around, sometimes when like the, the Nina gets right here, the camera will try to focus on my hand. So it'll like then briefly lose focus on me and then go back. Um, oops, and then I hit the Nitty Naughty on my computer, but Yes. Um, yeah, so I, I'll over dye with lots of different colors. Okay, now I'm in, you know, we've got two sections from two different black sprinkles. Um, I had three kinds of black sprinkles overall. I had some of the like long, like ice cream type sprinkles. I had some black non pearl sprinkles, and then I had some black sugar sprinkles. Uh, and so the other issue with homemade skein sometimes is if especially if it's twisted sometimes i start getting having more tension on one of the two skeins i'm unraveling than the other which then makes it even harder to unravel because it's a little bit off and that's hard to correct but it takes me a tiny bit longer to unravel homemade skeins but not like unreasonably would an orange and green turn brown well what would you have expected to happen with yellow and purple it did not turn brown when I over dyed the highlighter yellow. So that was a bright neon yellow with violet food coloring. So, uh, you know, you can, you can try it. It depends. So I guess think of it this way. Uh, bare yarn has a sort of yellow tinge to it, but the amount of dye that you're usually adding, there's so much that it gets overpowered. Uh, the, the color of the base will have some effect um, from whatever you dye it. I mean, you can't really over dye a black yarn another color. It's just you wouldn't really see it. But, you know, you aren't, when you, when you want to over dye something, it might be easier and less risky to try something more complimentary. But you're certainly not limited to it, if that makes sense. So... Hee <laughs> Oh, jeez. Sorry. Um, checking on. Just checking on my stream health. Okay, there have been some times where it's not been great. But yeah, if you guys start noticing any uh, quality issues, let me know. And if something were to, uh, like, if something were to happen, like this, the stream would go down or something. Oh, I'm right there. I would come on and chat uh, to let you guys know. So, uh, yeah, it, sometimes things disappear and then start working again. All right. But, oh, I guess I didn't really talk about my technique much today, but I sort of keep my hand in between, in between the two strands so that way I can wind one around one side and one around the other. Um, and you like that I painted the backside also? Yes, I wanted, I did one blank this time where I only, no, I guess I had two blanks where I only really colored one of the two sides 
And then I had, actually, let's untwist this a bit. I had two blanks where I only colored one side, and then I had a couple others that I did both just because I wanted, I didn't want everything to have tons of white because since we were doing a lot of, I was experimenting with a lot of different speckling type techniques, I knew that there would be a lot of white overall. And so I wanted to sort of minimize it. But yeah, so basically I have clipped it together and I'm just letting it untwist so that I have an easier time separating the strands of yarn. Aha. But yes, so this means that this skein I must have done from a center pull ball. I have one more, well, I have a few more handmade skeins, I guess. And I think I have a bunch, I have like 10 soft blanks left as well. I guess we're gonna have to do a soft blank special three someday. But yeah, so now, right now, and they're very subtle. Yeah, but right now I've got some green sugar sprinkles. I need to, one of you gave me a good recipe for making my own sugar sprinkles, but I need to do that at some point. Because I think some, I know some people in especially Canada and people in Europe can't really get Kool-Aid. Um, so I think that sugar sprinkles plus some citric acid powder would be a reasonable substitute. And just spun some corndell for a hat. Ah, okay, so yes. So if you want to dye something a pale color, I mean, I guess Linda, so Linda had some fiber that she spun that's a little bit tannish and she sort of wants to dye it a pale blue, like a sky blue. I would try doing a little swatch of it. So maybe, you know, cut off an inch or something and try try it with a tiny bit of blue food coloring, there is a chance it could turn green. And so my, when I broke violet on the highlighter yellow, I got purple and green as the, the colors broke. Um, but the purple didn't look brown, which was nice, um, or orange. I was, you know, really unsure of what it would look like in the end. So you can get you know, there, there's a lot of variety of what you could do, but I was doing an experiment. And so it's it's different from when you're doing, oh, I wonder what will happen if, and then you go for it and you can go, wow, that's cool. But if you want to, to try to achieve a specific color, then I recommend that you sort of try out on some swatching to see if it would work. Uh, yes, try a mini, exactly, Karen, try a mini butterfly and try dyeing that. Um, yeah, so, and you know, especially if you, you do something like, okay, I'm going to dye a one gram, I mean, one gram could be a lot depending on how much you have, but it, you know, if you weigh the amount you have, then you could scale up and I somehow did something funky here. Okay. We're good. We're good. But, oh, I haven't given a close up in a while, but so the specs, none of these like darker sections with specs go all the way around because each each of those brightly colored sections is only on half of the skein, but I have never bleached. Uh, well, I mean, the only things I've ever bleached <laughs> have been by accident when I was working in the lab. I have never bleached yarn and I don't recommend it because uh, it could, um, I don't recommend doing it because it could damage the fibers. Um, you know, I, when you have pure white yarns, they have been bleached. Um, so what we're seeing here and where we've got like this, I've got way more of one strand than the other. That's because of like my tensions being off as I'm wrapping. Not, this is not from say, uh, this is not a problem of the yarns not being matched up. Like I was concerned about that one of the first times, but it's really the, you know, if, if I've got this, this happens more with homemade ones, but it's because of the twist. And so then as I'm separating them, I have, I have more tension on one finger than the other. And that just sort of affects. Yeah. I feel like this one's tighter than the other one. Huh. 
<laughs> oh, my pants? No, they're giraffes. <laughs> I want alpaca pants. <laughs> alpaca pants would be awesome. But, I, yeah, I have... Since I, you know, started living in leggings and stuff, I decided to go start going for more wild patterns. Oh, that thing. The reason why I'm having issues. But, yeah, the, whew. All right, actually, so we're about halfway through. But this, is, this one is harder. I know this one I did do with two separate 50 gram skeins first. So, this hawthorn yarn, which, I mean, I'm, I'm handling it a lot right now, so I really like it, but it uh, is just a little more troublesome to untangle. So that's why I don't recommend, even though I did a video on it, starting with a center pull ball. <laughs> um, it is worth the effort to, you know, what what is it that, they say like sometimes like wind, wind twice, you know, cry less or something for when you're going to be using a knitting machine because you want to start with a, like an extra loose center pull, pull ball. This is a similar, I think a similar thing like wind, uh, you know, taking, taking the time to wind to, you know, oh crud, to wind the skeins in half will save you time when you're unraveling it. Let's see, I'm glad that I'm doing this in advance because if I was going to knit with this yarn from this blank, I would be a lot more annoyed. But not all of my homemade blanks have given me trouble like this. Only, oh, come on, clippies. Not all of them have given me trouble, only the ones, some of them. So that's good. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh no. I can't see. I left the windows open strange. There we go. All right. But woof. I am I'm almost going to be sad. Like on one hand I'm excited for these to all be unraveled because then well then I can start thinking about my next big pro big 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 project. But I ultimately have been really enjoying just these calm, <laughs> calm sessions, even, ugh, even when I get a little frustrated at my yarns. But I sort of was putting this one off because I knew that this one in particular, I couldn't remember for sure if it was a two-stranded or not, but... I had a feeling, so there we go. But you'll see that when I'm unraveling this, I am pushing the yarns out uh, towards the outside. And I like to do this because it gives you a nice sense of what the gradients look like. Whereas if um, you could just, you could not do that and just wind around and around and around and around and you'd still get something really, really beautiful, uh, but it, it's then harder until you knit it to get a sense of what the gradient could be. Ha, I am spinning. Oh, I haven't spun in a while, guys. But yeah, I, well, there's a lot of things I wanna, wanna dye. I've got, I think I'm gonna do I can't decide if I want to use some of these Easter kits in a live stream or if I want to, um, if I want to do a uh, spinning live stream next. I haven't really decided yet. Oh, come on, you twisted mama jama. It's like you're not even that twisted right now. 
Here we go. I wish I could like fix the tension issues that I'm having. Cause in the very first one I did, uh, I was very concerned when I was very concerned when I ended up getting like this weird tension difference. And I was like, Oh, is that like the way I was holding the tension as I was knitting it? But no, it ended Ow, it ended up like being even at the other end. It was really based on how I was winding it. Will I dye some more roving? Oh, absolutely. Um, the most recent Dye Pot Weekly episode was a roving dyeing video. Uh, but in a live stream, I could do some more roving soon. It's been, well, I guess it hasn't been that long. But I guess it's been a while since I've dyed anything in a live stream that wasn't a blink. Yeah, I'm really focused. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I do a combination. I think I knit, like I pick up my yarn while I knit, but I th sort of throw while I purl. Um, so I, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry guys, this one is a more focused, focused one. But when I finish this one, I'm gonna go grab some water. Oh dear, too far away, too far away. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Yeah, so I knit so much faster than I purl, but I've never figured out the way to purl the same way that I knit. Uh, so now I actually learned how to knit when I was in fifth grade and then had some hiatuses from it and then kept, you know, picked it up again in high school and then again in college. And then in grad school is when I started chem knits and this winter. So like this next new year's will be 10 years of chem knits should have a chem knits party but that would make it seem like i have to knit a lot of stuff for a lot of people oh i love stranded work here let me grip so i often talk about and if i hopefully i don't knock over the webcam uh i talk a lot about the first 100 percent wool yarn that i ever dyed and so this is the first wool yarn that i ever dyed not the black but I dyed the yarn to make these mittens. So I dyed this like yellow, blue and green colorway. So I, excuse me, wanted something that felt like stained glass. Mm. But yes, I love, I love stranded work. I love lace. I admire sock patterns and I save sock patterns, but I don't do a lot of socks because I don't wear a lot of socks. Um, but I might have to start knitting socks. Keith likes socks, but I got him a bunch of, <laughs> I got him, he has too many socks right now. So I don't know what he would do if I started making him a bunch. Uh, thank you. The, the hat pattern was a free one and I'm totally blanking on it. Both of the projects are in my Ravelry library and they're both on Chemnitz with, I mean, the patterns aren't on Chemnitz, but any modifications that I did and stuff are on there. The mittens came from, came from a book, which, uh, yeah, I, I have talked about both of them on the, on the blog, but yeah, the days. So my first pair of gloves and only pair of gloves is one that I made from the same book that I did with the mittens, but, and which was actually my first stranded color work project ever. And my mother-in-law loves them and wears them all the time. And at one point she's like, Oh, I'd love a second pair. So that way I can, you know, she can leave one someplace. And I was like, well, with two young kids, um, it's not, really that likely to happen but someday i will make her another 
black and cream, very traditional um, pair of mittens. So, yeah, I, I, I crochet a little bit. But wait, what's combined knit and crochet? Oh, yeah, sometimes I, um, I love doing a crochet border on things. But yeah, when I look at some of my old projects from when I started Chemnitz, I've grown so much as a knitter. But okay, we're nearing the end of this mess. Oh, dear. <laughs> this mess, mess, mess. But the yarn is really, really cool. Um, we've got all of these different color speckles that go through. And so when it's knit up into something, um, this one would be a really fun one to do with, uh, not comp, I mean, I'm not sure how something this with all these different colors would work up with lace. It could be a very simple lace thing, but I think that the, even though there's a gradient, since there's the teal throughout it, that there's enough consistency that it might not look very busy. Okay, let me get, oh dear. Okay. But, okay, so here's like some of the speckles around the sprinkles. And so you can see how, you know, they, they show up like on similar parts. All right. We are so close. Okay, now actually might be when I start to, so I just unraveled a bunch. Uh, it's not quite cheating. It's kind of like pre-drafting. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I really, really love, oh gosh, I make a ton of hats. Um, Mainly because I think that's basically what I use the most. I have a pair, my first pair of convertible mitts I wear all the time. And I wear these ones a lot too. And then I have a thicker pair of mittens that I designed um, that matched a hat that I designed, my ombre hat pattern. And I have mittens and I also made a matching headband because I wanted something to wear just if my hair was in a ponytail easily. But I, yeah, I do a lot of winter accessories because when they get wet, you always need more. And yeah, this one's taking my focus. You have 50 blocks done for the Persian Dreams Afghan. Oh gosh, I have like, thinking of Afghans, I really wanted to make like a beekeeper's quilt. And I mean, I've been work, I haven't made a hexapuff in years though, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I love, it's like blanket and sock patterns are two things that I save a ton of. And oh goodness, I, there's a little baby that I love who's one and what's it, March? So, okay, she's probably 16 months and her baby blanket just doesn't, has just been cast on and poor love. She, um, is the... Right, so I guess there's five, six, seven, eight. So she's the ninth one of these that I was making. And as far as I know, because I don't think anyone in the, the groups are, in these groups of friends are pregnant again, um, potentially the last, but I feel bad because she, poor thing, hasn't gotten the blanket. And I mean, in the second round of kids, they, they, the, the blankets went to the kids after the kids were born, but okay, I do have a legit knot here. Uh, ooh, I thought something about drawstrings. I'm totally, I like that you guys are chattering a lot um, in the chat while I <laughs> troubleshoot this blank. Oh goodness. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Do not, Rebecca, simmer. Do 
not make things worse for yourself than they need to be. By worse for yourself, do not make more knots. Oh dear. Okay, you'll deal with that when you get there. All right. Let's continue the unraveling. Yeah, the first homemade blank that I unraveled, that one, well, I also kind of forgot some of the ways that I would unravel these blanks. And so that one I struggled with a bit, but. Uh, ooh, combining sewing and knitting. Oh, there was a really, really gorgeous, it was a crochet and knit. If I had a daughter, I would have made this. It was a very, very simple skirt. But it was this cute crocheted top that then you could either do it, um, it's it sort of either you could have it be sort of cross back or um, it could either be, it could either cross on the back or be straight on the back. So therefore this was like a little dress that could turn into a tunic when the, you know, when, as the kid grew up, so the, a kid would fit in it for a, a really long period of time, which I thought was awesome. And I've got, I tangled myself. Um, I'll be able to get through it. I know I will. But it's a problem with the wavy, wavy yarns. Okay, what's going on here, guys? Do, 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 don't mind me. But yeah, I forget what the pattern was that I saw, but it was gorgeous. And that was back before I, I sewed. I almost, it was one of those, like, I knew because I had all these little girl patterns saved and things that I wanted to make that meant that I was for sure going to have a little boy. <laughs> and I had two boys. Uh, whom I love dearly, but it's harder to make little boys clothes than it is to make little girl clothes. Um, not hats and stuff, but just in terms of shape and structure. So I do a lot of applique. Oh, I do a lot of applique. <laughs> uh, I felt bad. I had every intention of making Keith a new birthday shirt for this year, but I got so backed up that, aha, we're untangled. We're going to get to the end of this. Um, I got so backed up with other projects that I was like, I am so sorry. I didn't make you a shirt for your birthday. And he's like, I'll survive. <sighs> And I was like, okay, but I want you to know that I love you. <laughs> He's like, it's really okay. I, I, I don't need a shirt. <laughs> All right. Here we go. And I'm going to just tie these off. And then, oh, probably should deal with that extra little bit. That's just a butterfly that I dyed. It's like a little, not even a mini skein. Okay. Oh, I want to tie this over here. Okay, but teaching you to deal with adversity. You guys are awesome. <laughs> here we go. Here is the yarn. So let me try this camera because I think it shows. Ooh, though, although now it's looking really green, the color balance is way off because this is really more of a blue, like teal, teal versus a seafoam green. But we've got, oh, sort of in these different, so there's teal throughout, and then we've got, okay, I'm going back, the, the colors are better on this camera. Okay, so we've got the teal throughout, and we've got some of the black sprinkles, green, purple, and then the rainbow I use multiple times, so there would be some consistency through it. But... Yeah, I think that it is really, really pretty. But anyway, I think I'm gonna send you guys to a really quick commercial break because um, I wanna run and grab a sip of water. But this yarn is really, really pretty. And yes, this one was a pain to unravel, but not all homemade blanks are. 
I'd say most of my home blanks have been pretty easy to unravel. Um, it's just two that have been really, really complicated. So anyway, I will um, soon, I, I, yeah, I'll send you guys to a commercial break and then I'll be back. And not everyone sees the commercials. Um, so it's pretty, uh, whatever Google's algorithm does, but then, ooh, now that's looking real green. All right, I'm gonna go grab some water. saying DNA for the end. So this next one, hopefully I don't struggle too much, but adversity wise, you know, we'll, we'll see. Oh, I didn't even put that back away. We'll see what we get. <laughs> uh, oh, funny. I don't know what video that I see a comment, but <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden Chrome started giving me notifications of my YouTube comments, which on one hand is nice, but um, wait, you're going to kick what off your loom? Ooh. Ha! Yeah, okay, you guys are awesome. But hopefully this next one will be a bit easier. So I don't have two, two big struggles back to back to back. But, uh, oh, I should quickly snap the pictures. And, oh. So you can really kind of see now, let me see. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to tell. Uh, but this one is, the one's side is bowed in a bit, a bit more. But all right, quick picture for the recap. Just in case I forget. Here we go. All right. Yeah, I don't know who Jojo and Vera are. So, but, all right. New Nitty Naughty. And I'm saving the easiest one for last. <laughs> I'm one of the, the nitpicks blanks, but. All right, so this is the one. This one is the sole non. Okay, I think that that's. Oh, right, because I left this end loose. Um. This is the sole blank that I did with a non knit picks yarn. And okay, what I'm going to do, and I feel horrible, horrible doing this, but I wish I had done it before um, to make things easier so someone could start from either end knitting. There's a bit of extra yarn, but I am going to clip it so that way that I start with even sides. Um, because otherwise, like you could try to line up the two ends and then it wouldn't really work right because um you know if you're having a matched set of skeins you really want them to be matched <laughs> and it'd be a bummer to start two yards ahead of one than the other and this is not a colorway where it'd be really easy to figure it out because some of the colors are pretty subtle so i dyed this one in the sprinkles and speckles one as well. I put a bunch of sprinkles on the bottom and then of the pan and then on the top I added a bunch of sprinkles. And unfortunately, of all of the yarns that I've dyed with sprinkles, this one still feels a tiny bit crusty. So after I photograph it and I add on all of, um, after I've unraveled it, which hopefully it'll unravel fine, I will need to wash it some more. So I'll add a ton of ties and wash it with a lot more soap, et cetera. Um, so that way I can get the residual junk from the sprinkles out. But in general, this one I also used a lot of sprinkles, a lot more. And I've dyed a lot with candy and I haven't had this crunchy problem. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I think that hopefully I can resolve it with more um, washing and if not actually it's funny it feels a little crunchy in the blank but right here on the yarn it doesn't anymore so maybe it was just 
huh. You know, sometimes when you like do, let me, I'll still wash it some more. You know how sometimes when you air dry stuff and it feels stiff and then you touch it a bit and it's soft again? That's sort of what this feels like. But no, it definitely still needs some washing. But a lot of, I love how subtle a lot of these color changes are going to be. And so here in this dark section on the back that's kind of brown, I had dumped a ton of the black non pearl sprinkles on one side and the color went all the way through. And, but I think my favorite part of this one is some of these spots where I had all these rainbow non pearls, like in this section right there, which I'm not getting close enough to there. That's my favorite, my favorite section. Um, so this yarn is, I forget if it's 10, I, I don't remember the proportions exactly. It's maybe it's 80% super merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And what I don't know, cause this is the first cashmere blend that I've dyed. What I don't know is if the cashmere content makes dye absorb slower sort of like the, I think I had one when I like a 30% silk blend and that even though they're still 70% wool, it absorbed color a lot slower than my 100% wool or wool nylon blends do. So, but hey, at least this guy's unraveling easily. So, yeah, so far we've got this really lovely sort of pastel. Yeah, as I'm frogging it, that's softening it as well. Like I'm not feeling crunchy anymore. Um, oh, you were watching your yarn while dyeing it. Well, guess what? I still, I'm on my third blank that I'm unraveling. And after this, I still have one more. So, and let's see how twisty this one's getting. Shouldn't be getting that twisty. Oh, it's still getting a bit twisty. Go figure. This one, I definitely wound the yarn into two 50 gram skeins first. Um, I think that with some of the bigger yarns, some of these twists don't end up being as big a deal and it's a lot easier to work through um, than some of the, the fingering weight ones. Do, do, do. Your cat finally fell asleep. Cause yeah, so Indy has always been, my dog has always been very, oh dear, has always been very respectful of my yarn. And so he knew like if something was blocking, well for a long time I would set up like a, I'd put something like a laundry basket over whatever I was blocking so he couldn't get it. And then, I mean, it's like he knows. And again, with my like goofy tension, thing. I wish I, because I know how sometimes the way I'm holding it, I'm going tighter on one side than the other, but that is kind of irritating me. Uh, so frogging is what I'm doing right now. You could call frogging Oreo. So basically the reason why I'm ripping something like I'm ripping up this, this blank right now is called frogging is because rip I'm rip, rip, ripping it. So it's like rip it, rip it, frog. At least that's where I think it comes from. Do, 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 do. But this yarn is really soft. Even if my darn tension I don't know why this, I always do this. And especially because the tension difference carries through the whole way. So it's not like, um, I'm just, whoa, Nelly. There we go. Now, the one thing I could do that would be really, really devastating would be to cross. <laughs> would be to mix up the two, the two sides, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Ah, uh, okay. 
so I'll go this way. If only I could like, oh dear, what? There we go. Wait, no, I want this side to be really tight so I can catch up. No, all right. See, sometimes I can chat more. Sometimes I get hyper, hyper focused. Oh no, I do want this one to be the tight one. I'm like not. No, I can't, my brain's not working right, guys. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm just gonna go slow and steady. At least this is stunning. There's something, there's like a great, the yarn wasn't gray at all, but I think with all the stuff I did, it sort of gives us this really nice gray quality, which I think is very special. Come on. I'm trying to, there we go. Cause you almost think that you could like wrap it. All right, I'm gonna, on, at least the other end isn't so bad. Um, yeah, I wish I could cause, do catch up or something to fix this. Oh, come on over extended one side than the other so maybe it's just an issue with the way i unravel these these homemade blanks the homemade fingering weight blanks because i've only had oh dear this issue on the homemade fingering ones versus my like the worsted weight ones haven't had as much of a problem You love that you talk to myself. Oh gosh. Yeah, the <laughs> you guys are probably up on all of my like little um mannerisms. <laughs> yes, I talk to my stuff. I I feel like it's funny when I'm like doing when I'm uh, well, I guess if I'm unraveling or dying, then I might be watching something. <laughs> but it's funny when I think I still, I just talked to myself a lot, which made it sort of natural to start doing live streams and stuff just because it's pretty natural. Okay. So if I really wanted to try to do catch up, then I would do go really loose on that one and tighter on this one. Let's see if I can get this caught up. There we go. That's way better. Ha ha. No wonder you have so many unfinished ones. The Miso you bought was bigger than you thought it was going to be. Um, you did the DNA stencil while it was damp. Yes. So with this, this one, um, with this DNA blank back here and all of the stenciling that I did, I pre soaked the yarn in water with vinegar. Um, and then, oh, drat. I did it again. I got rid of my loosest, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I pre-soaked the, the blanks in water and vinegar. And then I, um, before, right, I did that before I did the, did the stencil. So that way, um, that way, once I did the spray, it would strike really quickly. That loose, this one tighter. Sorry, trying to like get myself back on target again. 
I was on target for a second and then I pulled too much. It's like my loose versus tight. Okay, tight, tight, loose. Nope, tight on you, loose on you. And you belong over here. Yeah, okay, each time I then back up, then <laughs> it does it over again. You talk to yourself in the kitchen. Hey, talking to yourself is underrated, I think. Uh, I think that it shows that you just have Having, having conversations with yourself means that you have a lot of thoughts and you just need to get them out there. <laughs> oh. Why do you add vinegar to the water instead of the dye stock? That is a good question. I think ultimately it's a matter of personal preference. But the reason why I prefer to add vinegar to the yarn first instead of to the dye stock is that, especially with food colorings, some colors tend to crash out at low pH. So if I was doing, say, Wilton's Violet, um, if you've seen in some of my older videos where I had it in a kettle, if I added the acid too early, then we would end up seeing this really bright red ring around the pot. And that was the red number three that was becoming, that was crashing out, which means it's becoming insoluble. And so it could still stain the yarn, but um, it wouldn't give like the even coverage that I was going for. And so that's just why I s sort of stopped. If that makes any sense. And there we go. Okay, I've got to untwist this again. Oh no, oh no. Um, but... Yeah, so, but I know some people prefer to add the vinegar to the dye stocks. And depending on some hand painting techniques that I like to do, I do prefer to add the vinegar to the dye. But most of the time, I do add the vinegar to the pre soak. Uh, you talk to yourself while doing Kitchener? Oh, yeah, you have to talk while doing Kitchener. Kitchener is not a silent friend. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, Linda, you got, you're giving some really great questions. Um, I think that's, and I'm always happy to answer questions during streams and not during streams. Um, oh, cool. Not Chemnitz related, but, although maybe, ooh, maybe that's what maybe I should work on during Pesach. I should work on the, 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 the actually I think I'm making a sheep too it would be so cute I haven't knit very much in a while um because I've been dying so much yarn but I'm going to be starting up I think a, a pace which should allow me some more knitting time I've just been pretty tired so I've been just resting and eating things while watching tv but even with this brown section, it is so cool. All right. You guys are awesome for hanging out with me while I get frustrated. And well, all things considered, I'm not that frustrated. If I was really frustrated, I would probably end this stream. Um, I do try. I know sometimes kids watch these. So I try um, not I try not to swear during the streams themselves but unless of course i drop water <laughs> on the computer <laughs> that gets me to swear while i'm live but otherwise uh i i tend to oh goody we're in that rainbow section i love i think i tried getting a bunch of these solid color non pearls and i wonder if do i have enough slack that i could do ha ha Yes. All right. I think I'm pretty even again because my unevenness finally caught up with itself. Nope, not quite. I just got behind on one side. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I bought, because from Michael's had like a big sale online, so I got these single color non pearls thinking that they'd be really cool, but they actually weren't my favorite. I really like the bright rainbow ones better. The really bright rainbow non that I have, I got from 
AC Moore is my closest big box craft store. And yeah, it's their store brand, the Nicole. And I picked it because of all the rainbow sprinkles. And this one had really, really bright colors and the fewest white spring, whoops, white sprinkles in there. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I like the Kitchener stitch, except when I, at the very end, there's always like the tip of whatever I'm doing always points out a bit. And so then I have to like finagle it. <laughs> but in general, I, I like it as a technique. I do have, well, I, I did do a quick tutorial because some of my knitting tutorials happen because like a friend of mine will ask, how to do something and so then I'll try to film a tutorial for them so that way I can show them. <laughs> and the Kitchener Stitch one, I had to film it a couple times to get it right. <laughs> oh. Knitting on camera can be hard sometimes just because, well, in the old way I'd do it, I'd have like one of those gorilla pods like around my neck and so I'd have the camera right here so I couldn't see my hands. I could only see the screen. So I was trying to knit without seeing what I was doing at an unnatural angle. Now I do a setup uh, where I can sort of see around the camera about more. Um, because I mean, you extended your knitting out of yay! Yeah, I only like doing these long ones when I'm unraveling two at a time. Whoops. I might have to untwist, maybe not, one more time. Oh, Indy, what are you complaining about? Uh-oh, no, honey, that was not, you stay back there. <laughs> I hear this, like, harump from the other room. He's like, Mommy, who are you talking to? Yes, the, you know, I find I'm a lot faster with the traditional nitty naughty sort of uh, thing, but with two, with two blanks or with two skeins at a time, that would be hard. I need to add the weight back on here, but I'm really digging. I mean, the only, only food coloring on this whole blank which unfortunately you can't really appreciate the warmth uh, i mean we're going to come into two cool cooler tones like some blues and greens in a minute but i don't think that what's showing up on camera you guys can really appreciate the 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 warmth of the tone of this yarn um have i ever dyed cotton i have so i um, so far, the two ways that I've dyed cotton are, I mean, cotton t-shirts with tie-dye techniques, but then I have also, and I should untwist this one more time, um, I have also dyed cotton yarn using, again, the, I've done cotton yarn with the tie-dye kits, but I have also done cotton yarn with using RIT, um, sort of like all-purpose dyes. But I've heard from some people that the writ does not always last very long on cotton. So I plan at some point to buy some fiber reactive dyes, which will work on basically everything. But the, my concern with using some more fiber reactive dyes is with acid dyes, if I drop it on my floor, I can wipe it up. Fiber reactive dyes will stain a lot of things because they will react with a lot of things. So, but I'm still, nevertheless, still really excited to, to play with them. Uh, but yes, I do have plans to do some more cotton on the channel. I actually got um, a variegated gray cotton from Knit Picks. So the, before the sock yarn sale today, there, the sale of the month at Knit Picks was on their dishy yarn, which is 100% cotton. 
And so I went ahead and bought some of that just because <laughs> it was on sale and I thought it'd be fun to over diet. Um, well, okay. So do you use soda ash? I think with, I think I would need to use soda ash with, uh, with fiber reactive dyes. The, the tie dye kits that I use, I haven't needed to use any soda ash because they were one step tie dye kits. Um, so everything that's needed is mixed into the powder already. But good to do. Haha. -ha. Yeah. Oh no, not stains. I mean, it just means that you need to be a little more careful. I think that, well, because of concerns of if for anything that I'm especially concerned with stains with, I might start in the summer, especially, I might start doing some more dyeing outside, especially now that I have, so I've got a hot plate that I could use outside for things as well. Um, but anything I'm worried about fumes with and stuff I can do outside and we can listen to the cric crickets chirp while we dye yarn. Ah. Uh, Okay, so the question is, would it be safe to use fiber reactive dyes on cotton that you use for hold on the shorter strand? Yeah, but it's on the other side of my body. That I know that's what I need to do. I kept, but it's over there. I'd have to like switch my whole handedness, I think. But... Ha. Uh, okay, so yes, I'm not sure about making dishcloths from cotton. I mean, I guess I would look at what the the recommendations are for the fibers because I mean, so I would not use fiber reactive dyes using any pot that I would use for cooking. But I don't know if that means that you could then make and have washed. A, I mean, there's a difference between dyeing a piece of cloth with the dye and then using that as a dishcloth and having the, the dye itself and cooking with the dye in the pot. But I don't know. I don't know if that means that it's safe to eat with. So we have a couple pounds of cotton blanks to dye. Woo, that's awesome. Wait, where did you get cotton blanks? Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the other side longer. Okay, not that that, I'm still holding the long one. <laughs> not that that really helps me. Okay, it's easier holding the, the long one near me than the long one away. <laughs> oh, but we're so close to being done with this guy. The, the, this, I wish that I could really like, you guys could appreciate, yeah, the colors just aren't reading on the camera. We've got blues and pinks and purples and it's just really, really subtle, but still a gradient. And I think it would hold up really well with cables and stuff because of how subtle all of these colors are overall. Um, Oh, you made, okay, you made the couple pounds of blanks. Sorry, you're waiting for your dyes to arrive, not the blanks. I misread for a second and I was like, wait, because I can't tell you that like way back in the day, I was like, ooh, I wonder if there's a way to get my own blanks manufactured. And then I was like, yeah. <laughs> there's a reason why, uh, I mean, I'm so glad that so many yarn suppliers now sell blanks 
but there's a reason why they're more expensive. It's just, you know, it takes more time to make them. So, but okay, so you guys want to know what I've been working on? So I've got two sort of projects in the pipeline. One, and this one's a little further out, but hopefully sometime this spring, I will have a D stash sale. And then once I do the first D stash sale, then I won't have to wait as long in between because then I'll have a sense of how, I think I'm going to do it through Etsy of how Etsy and stuff works. The other thing that I'm working on is that I'm working on, because a lot of you guys have asked, I'm setting up my Patreon account. So hopefully very soon I'll have that up and running. Um, and right now, I think I've got some pretty cool things planned uh, for patrons. So, um, but that, I'll, once that's set up, I'll go live and um, chat a bit about it. Wait, where do you get worms? Oh, you're gonna wait, who's raising silkworms? Oh, wow, that is so cool. Uh, I watched a video on people like, you know, turning the like the stuff into silk hankies and it's so cool looking. Um, but that's awesome. I would love, so I talked about saving indies for, well, I'd love to have my own alpaca, not that I will ever have enough land to do that. Um, but I would own an, a rabbit, an angora rabbit, if Keith were not probably allergic to bunnies. Um, how did I not this? I grew up with guinea pigs, um, so I feel like I would be able to give some appropriate love to a bunny if, of course, we could get, I mean, we have Indy, so we'd have to uh, keep them separate and give the bunny lots of space to run around. But uh, the, the problem is that Keith is very allergic to guinea pigs, so therefore a bunny is sort of a no-go but I like the thought of having my own little friend, fiber friend in the house. Uh, but, wow, that's awesome. I hope that you share like some of that experience cause I'm excited to hear about it. Okay. All right, Rebecca. Okay, what is going on? See, this is the, this is, this, this is the reason why I wet things. Because these little, these little beautiful wavy ribbons of yarn can just get really tangled around themselves. But if you are super patient, you can tighten another knot. <laughs> there was one knot I had once that I almost, this one, this isn't a frustrating knot because I can see how it goes. There was one knot that I had on one something or other once that almost resulted in me uh, canceling, not canceling, but ending the live stream to deal with it. Uh, <laughs> but it takes a bit. Wait, is this long enough that I could? Oh no, don't mess up my pretty gradient. Rebecca. Rebecca. Okay. Uh, um, well, you know, I, the, the fear from the, cause it's, it wasn't even the, I mean, people can be allergic to all kinds of different things. So yeah, people, the, the, you know, he, even, 
just because it's something that not very many people are allergic to, you know, doesn't mean there can always be something, someone allergic to it. Like I have a friend that's allergic to carrots. Um, and there was something else that seemed very, and very unusual. Um, but yeah, so the, I mean, he, it was, and his allergy, like he touched, he pet, picked up the guinea pig and I don't know if it was from the saliva or from the dander, but he broke out in hives from the guinea pig. So, uh, it's made him nervous at when we've been gone to fiber fairs, understandably, but oh, yay rainbows. Okay. We are so close to the end of this one. And then the last blank. So again, not all of my homemade blanks have been like this much caused me this much more, have been more troublesome than the pre-made blanks. But I think again, it's all based on what your effort, what you, what you want to do. I don't know if personally I would, I wouldn't necessarily bother making my own fingering weight blanks if I didn't want to do it to show and demonstrate that it can be done and you can make your own gorgeous yarns without having to buy the blanks. Now, obviously, uh, it's good for me if you guys buy more blanks, but, <laughs> you know, I want, the goal is to make things feel approachable and my goal is to make things feel approachable and accessible. And I know that spending $20 on a blank can be, uh, you know, it's a, it's an expense, but you know, maybe spending $16 is more your style. The nitpicks blanks are on sale right now. Um, you outgrew all of your allergies. Whoa. Yeah, I am, I'm pretty left. Well, I got tested for allergies when I was in high school because I had a lot of seasonal symptoms and everything. And it turned out I wasn't actually allergic to a lot of things except for dust. Uh, but so they were like, oh, but these are irritants. So they were like non-specific, give me breathing trouble, but there was nothing that could be done about it. I haven't been retested uh, since I was a teenager though. So I don't know, but I take like Claritin and stuff every day because if I don't, then I can tell that I did not take my medicine. Uh, you're allergic to hard work. <laughs> oh. oh man. No, I did have a big, actually, I did have a big battery of uh, blood allergy tests when I got sick at one point and I was very, they, and so they, I know that's not as accurate as the skin test. Did they do a redo a skin test? I don't remember when they were checking to see, uh, what was going on, but all right, we are finally coming to the end of this blank. And maybe on these two, I should weigh them so that way I could be like, although, goodness, if I'm adding cotton ties, that'll affect the weight um, if I'm trying to compare them. But what should I just feel? Yeah, I mean, so again, I felt said that this felt crusty when I started. It does not feel crusty anymore at all. It feels actually um, really nice. So I think that wipe um, washing it should, should help a lot. Um, this is really, really, really soft. And again, the, this fiber was wool to die for's cash sock MCN. And I bought it, goodness, years ago. Um, I got a three pack sampler of some of their yarn. Sometimes they offer, and the, the, the fiber types that are in these three packs vary, but 
Okay, this is the gradient that we've got. And I'll try showing on the other, I'll show on this camera as well. At least you can get a sense. Yeah, the colors aren't coming through. There's a lot more sort of purple, blue, green, rainbow stuff in here, but it is very, very subtle and lovely. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, so the, the colors aren't quite right, but it's just, it has a lot more richness to it in person than I think is coming through when I hold it up. Thank you. This one was really, really, really fun. Um, it's so subtle. And it would just be like some of these, especially subtle ones. If I like wild colors, I like really bright colors, but I know not everyone does. And so some of these more subtle ones are a fun way to give a lot of interest and have it be exciting when you're knitting, but otherwise have something that is, um, you know, you could, you could do a pattern, like have a nice pattern on it, or you could do something that is really even just like a stockinette sock or something. And it would just feel, very rich and classic. Little toe samples. Um, okay. Oh, <laughs> you're always <in> the kitchener. <laughs> All right. But so the last blank that we have tonight is one of the knit picks blanks that I dyed, um, and I am going to oh, I'll show my you guys my lovely uh, tired <laughs> looking face. Oh dear. Um, that I am going to drop in. This is the Knit Picks sock blanks are on sale. With, uh, I can't, there's not enough characters for me to add all of the stuff in. But yeah, the 20% the off is a better deal than what I usually get because I, well, usually, I have once bought a 20 pack of these blanks. Um, and whoa, you can see how much the color difference is off with this one. The close camera, I guess the close camera is bad, bad, bad. The, 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 the zoomed out, this camera is more true. At least to what I am seeing, uh, it still reads a little yellow overall, but will your acid dyes come tomorrow? Uh, well, you got tossed out, are you? Huh? What happened? My face is coming back. Uh. Ha! Huh. Huh. But yeah, I want, I want more acid dyes. Um, but, oh. So have one more blit, one more blank, one more knitty not ooh. Some of the ones that I like did the the cutting myself with the little cutter that I got. Um, some of those the they really could use some sanding so that way they can go in and out a bit better. But uh okay. But yeah, so this blank was one that I did in the uh spray the spray painting sock link special and so i used i think the so this black i think the black was the color miss spray the orange was a little like spray pen that craft spray thing that did these short little bursts the blue was an industrial strength spray bottle the teal was the misto and so those are all the, the colors that I did in here. Um, oh, that's too bad. Um, and so the, you can, oh, oh, I know it's gonna be like, wait, there's a lot of color on the back, but aha. So on the back of this blank, I use the, another color misspray. I use the blue color misspray to sort of spray all over the whole back. 
because overall there's a lot more color on the front than the back, which we knew would lead to uh, sort of some of those mottled specklings that we get, like the rainbow gradient that I undid. Um, so I wanted to see sort of what would happen because if you look at, I mean, some of the blue came through a bit, but in general with some of these sprays, like here in the black section, when you spread the yarn apart, you can see how you end up with getting those specks. And then the same thing on the back, because you sprayed the, the blue is a lot on sort of the bumps versus the valleys. So I think that we should get some really, really cool speckling combinations here. But I just need to figure out where, all right, I picked the correct side. And then, so this one, I did bring the stencil into it, but only in the sense that I put the stencil down on the blank to spray over it, because I was curious how well that worked. But, uh, I really, I haven't tried any of Wool to Die For as blanks, but I'd be curious to try some of those. Their, their yarns die really, really beautifully. The... So I'm starting with some orange and blue. Oh, cool. Uh, okay, so here. All right, this is awesome. Can you see? Uh, I should have zoomed in the camera a bit. Can you see how the like orange and blue specks alternate a bit? Here, let me. Maybe if I hold it on my shirt, does that show up or is it just going to blow it out? No, maybe if I do. Yeah, but basically having the color on the front and the back means that uh, rather than just getting the, the something in white splotched, we're getting uh, blue. I mean, there's still going to be some white in here, but we're getting like the blue and orange mixed and we'll probably have the blue and the black mixed. And it's going to be cool. Oh, uh, no, I haven't tried to calculate the placement of the cuff, heel and toe um, on on a blank. I'm sure I'm sure it would be possible, especially so if you're de especially dealing with some of these commercial blanks, because there's a consistency with the, the tension and how they're made. And I've got hair stuck on here. Uh, okay. Um, I think that what you would probably need to do would be to, to do that math. You'd have to do some measurements to figure out the number of yards that are present per, you know, certain number of rows. And then you would need to know something about the yardage that you used per cuff, per heel, per toe to then know like approximately where you would want to do that on your blanks. But I think that it is still something that could definitely uh, be possible. Uh, you would just, yeah, it would just take some math. Um, I haven't done really any planned colorways math-wise. I do have some plans to do some self-striping yarn, but, uh, not, you know, I'm not calculating the stripes based on a certain size from socks that I've knit. I'm just going to decide, okay, I'm going to do, I don't know, five yards per color or something. So, uh, huh. I, now I want to look up that hat pattern. It's too bad. I know you guys, um, probably sometimes because you guys are talking about cool things try to uh, post links in chat and i think youtube only lets me um and moderators and it doesn't even let me post whatever links i want only some so i'm going to give you guys another close-up in a minute i'm waiting to in the teal section the like teal and blue specs are not as um obvious because i'm waiting to get to sort of this, some of the more orange again. 
uh, to show just because the teal and the blue are ultimately pretty similar. But oh, this is pretty. This is really, really pretty. Um, it would be interesting to knit a sock, dye the heel, toe, and cuff, unravel it, knit it into a blank on the name machine to see what that looks like. Oh, interesting. So to like dip dye, to knit the sock and then dip dye the toe, dip dye the heel, and dip dye the cuff or some, or you know, hand paint that on. That would be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I really, except I know if I went and I searched and tried to load a web page on my computer right now, it would probably interrupt the stream pretty badly. It doesn't like it when I try to search for things online. Like when I was doing my knit crate unboxing, it went, um, oh goody, let me see if I can show some black and blue. Um, so there's some black specks and it's a little hard to see because it's not focusing on it. Maybe. Yeah. Camera doesn't want to focus on it. Okay. When I move it, you can sometimes see for a brief second that there's black and blue. <laughs> um, oh, maybe I should... I guess it's not the best, best example, but. Oh, but this is cool. Okay, here's a cool example. Okay, so here you see the blue at the tips. I've turned the orange, you see the orange across the center. So that's how true the color is on one side versus the other. That is cool. Okay, I gotta, here's my phone. I gotta take a picture of that. Um, okay, so we've got orange on that side. Blue on that side. And then, come on, let me stretch it. Uh, there we go. No. Orange and blue specs. Let me see if these came out. Oh, come on. Yeah, cool. So then I can, I'll try to, to share that at some point. Okay. But this is, this is fun. I mean, these color mist sprays, the unfortunate thing is that they're expensive. I think that I've definitely done two whole rainbow blanks with one complete set of the color mist sprays. And I think that there's still probably enough to do at least one or two more. But getting the, the six rainbow colors, unless you have a good coupon, you know, they're over $4 each. And that, you know, can, that adds up in terms of dye cost. Whereas if you get a, a misto and practice with the, your trigger finger on like how much to spray the pressurized dye out, then you can get a really similar effect and something that's reusable and you can mix your own colors. So, yeah. Use a pen. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this is just really, it's funny because the, oh, the places that are the black with the black and blue are just so cool. That stands out so much. It's, it's fun because it's still very speckled and splotched feeling, but it's really interesting to have like the two distinct colors. Um, you could go, you know, a little more wild with this and really do um more than just one color all over on the wrong side but i think that that also i mean that definitely pulls this yarn together a bit in what is otherwise a pretty random pattern but here's a, a close-up and of course you don't really see the oranges coming through that much but 
I think my sister-in-law would like this one a lot. Uh, her wedding colors were like this blue and orange. Oh good, there's a big orange section up there. I specifically placed the splotches on here because I didn't want it to be just overall striped gradient. I wanted there to be some more variation in each round, so. Hey, your knitting needles were in the mailbox. Woohoo! Yay for shipments. So in the last, what's today, the 15th? Yeah, in the last two days, I placed two knit picks orders. Now, I think the first one ended up being $50 and change. I'm really good at getting my carts to be exactly $50 <laughs> so I can get the, the free shipping. Uh, the second one may not have been quite uh, as close, but the, yes, because I got today, I think I got two skeins of Capretta and four skeins of Capra. I swear, I thought it was a mistake at first that Capra was 40% off because they didn't have, oh, the Imagination fingering weight yarn. Um, that one was, isn't part of the stock yarn sale, but some DKs were. And I know you can make socks out of DK yarns, but the Capra isn't super wash at all. So that's what surprised me. But I love, um, ooh. <gasps> okay, so I got, I've had this design that's been semi-formed in my head for some fingerless mitts for a while. And I got most of it figured out except for like one section where I wasn't sure what design I really wanted. But then I had, I had Capretta in two colors that I was planning to use for it, but I should totally dye some of it myself for the fingerless mitts, a la what I did here, and then do some color mixing. So, well, you got $50 and one cent? Okay, I don't think I've been that close. Um. <laughs> Socks are, I th really think I'm going to need to, you guys are going to need to make, start making socks. I mean, I keep looking at these and I want them to become socks. The problem, does anyone knit socks but not wear socks? My problem is that I haven't knit something for myself in a really long time and it's overdue. Mainly because, you know, my kids always need hats and stuff. So I don't make my kids mittens. I have made one pair of like thumbless mittens for when, or a couple pairs for when they were babies. But now that they go to school and stuff, I'm not making them mittens because I'm not having them lose things that I may have spent that much time on. Uh, but I will make them multiple, multiple, multiple hats because uh, you see them a lot more. So. Wait, I missed something. Make some washcloths. Make them wet, put them on while the kitchen floor. Yeah. Um, I haven't done a lot of dishcloths either. Uh, so people who make a lot of dishcloths, do you just use them then instead of sponges? For, you know, I guess scrubbing, scrubbing dishes. Because I maybe could be convinced. Yeah, you don't wear socks, but you may knit them for your family. Uh, yeah, I... Keith, well, if Keith had room in his sock drawer, I would start making him some more socks. I did, so I made Keith a pair of socks with worsted weight yarn, which isn't the same as doing like a sock yarn or something. That was years ago, and he actually like, I also made him a pair of felted slippers and so he like he used to and I don't know where the socks are actually right now but he would wear the socks that I made inside the slippers that I made a lot um but now he has fancier slippers well actually the I had to darn the felted slippers a bit because he got some holes in them so those did get a ooh, maybe I need to make him a new pair actually that's really what I should make for the kids 
Um, Lucas really likes wearing slippers. I should make him a pair. I want to make myself a pair of slippers. What am I talking about? Let's see the orange in that. Yes. Um, here. Let me try doing a close-up of... Let's do another close-up of the yarn where you can see the blue sort of at the tips and then the orange sort of in the center. And then when I pull it, whoops, you get sort of both. And uh, it doesn't show up very well. Um, let me get a little more orange on, on the Nitty Naughty, and then I'll pull this up for a close-up. But yeah, I mean, the but I will show another. Here's the front of the blank. And here's the back of the blank. So a lot of blue on the back. Yeah, I worry about, yeah, do, connecting mittens would probably, probably help. But instead, I mean, I went and I got, I think it was like at the Black Friday clearance I got. The kids can wear the same size mittens right now. So I think I got like 10 pairs of mittens from Carter's. And so it's been kind of nice because even if one is sort of missing, you can always find a pair of mittens in this house. Okay, so maybe now, yeah, there you can kind of see some of the orange and blue, blueness going back and forth. But it's very pretty. Ugh. I've been st really struggling with the white balance on my webcam. I really hope to get that worked out at some point. But it's a little easier during the day uh, to get things to look better. So that's why I prefer to do live streams with daylight hours if I can. And I do try, sometimes I'll film, well, the color is usually pretty bad when I'm doing the washing uh, in my dyeing videos because those I frequently do at night after the kids have gone to bed. And so I'm under like fluorescent, mix matched fluorescent bulbs. Um, Yes, when I do, so my plan, my plan for the, the Etsy shop, and we'll see how, I haven't, I don't even have like a shop, an official shop name yet on Etsy or anything. So this is all still in the beginning stages. I want to, before things go live, I want to register, yeah, there's, there's some logistical things that I need to register for. But uh, for the, the Unraveled Sock Blanks, I absolutely intend to show both pictures of the skein and I'll show, I might show a picture of say like what the yarn looked like on the Nitty Naughty and I'll show a picture of the blank, I think, just because you can get a sense of, oh, this really is a gradient yarn versus, uh, you know, a variegated yarn. Um, I, but I also plan or hope to at least to include links to the relevant videos. I mean, when I write labels on my yarn, I always, and I'll redesign labels at some point, I'm sure, but I have on one side featured in the title of the video and then the date of the, the date the video came out. There are some exceptions where the dates might be wrong because sometimes things that I schedule in advance I end up moving, shuffling things around a bit, but I do try in my less than perfect handwriting to share the title of the video. So that way um, you can always see a little bit more about how the yarn came to be if you so choose. Or you get soft a lot. Yeah, I mean, I could make I could make some for the kids and I feel like a hundred grams of yarn I could make I could make socks for like I feel like I could probably make four kids socks out of a hundred grams right so I do have one it's funny I don't really knit socks I do have one sock knitting pattern it's the Hermes uh, winged socks I designed so they're just little yellow socks and I designed these wings that you sew to either side of them. So when it puts them on, it looks like, you know, they're wearing the winged sandals. Um, 
And so I thought that that was, that was something that I sketched and then became a reality. And so I've got some cute pictures of the kids in that, but yeah, the, in general, I, oh, you were, you were a size five. See, I have size 10 feet. So my, my feet are, oh dear, there we go. My feet are not tiny. <laughs> but yeah, there, I, I can't tell you how many sock patterns I have in my queue. Um, I think that the, I think that I really would need to do, if I'm going to do socks, I need to do them two at a time. I, I think that that would help me because it's a problem I have and I love mittens. Um, and yeah, see my tension guys. Oh, well now I could, it looks like one side is more bowed. I'm getting my, starting my tension issues here. Um, but I'm so close to the end that we're fine. Uh, the, yeah, I think two at a time would really, really help me. Uh, I've never tried doing mittens two at a time and now that I'm saying that, I'm surprised that, that that's the case because uh, I think that that would help me with just in general uh, keeping track of the pattern and keeping gauge and everything consistent. So what on earth did I do? Why are we going at different rates? Um, oh, goodness. Hey, there is no problem with people who just knit for themselves. Um, I am part of the Selfish Knitters group on Ravelry, and I have that has helped me learn to just say no, and that no is a complete answer. And so there was one point before I got super behind on all my knitting where I would try to make hats for babies born to classmates or teachers of my kids. And I've since gotten really behind, and so I wasn't able to do that with this round of babies that just happened this year. In past years, I was able to do it, though. And, but I had, you know, because my boys wear the most adorable hats, it gets people's attention at school. And so someone had asked if, like, they could commission something from me, and I said, sorry, you know, I was able to say, sorry, I don't do commissions. Um, you know, and I had a friend, and, like, I have some friends that, um, have small businesses that maybe actually the one person I regret is that uh and we moved before I was able to get make this happen was the there was a photographer who did Lucas's newborn photos who's amazing but she offered she indicated that because she, she really liked the knit accessories I made and so that she would be willing to sort of like do some kind of exchange or give me some credit for photography services for giving her some knit props to use um, for photo shoots and so i just never got around to like contacting her and working on that but uh there's some other people that i might have done something similar like that with but uh the the question was about a blanket and i was like sorry no i'm not gonna do a blanket <laughs> um Wait, two at a time. Oh, okay, tattoo. Two at a time, toe up, I guess. Yeah, um, I, I feel like otherwise I would do one and then be done. Um, but the thing is, I don't know if I should, like, <sighs> I mean, I know that there are some socks that are a lot more lacy. Those... I just, I mean, I guess, so I love knitting lace. And when I, when I realized that, I was like, how often am I wearing all of these lace shawls that I made? I had a year because I was doing the 12 and 2012 shawls. And then I was starting to do 13 in 2013, but then I had Lucas and so I didn't finish. And of course the group also became 12 shawls forever. And so I was like, oh, I was all set to do 13 in 2013. And then yeah, but so when I did 12 in 2012, 12 shawls in 2012, I gave shawls and shawlettes and stuff to everyone for, to 
to a lot of the, the people in my life for Christmas. And, um, yeah, the, but, you know, I, I have a handy collection of lace wraps for myself, which pre-kids I wore all the time. Um, all, all, all the time. Because, I mean, I love them. And, you know, for a while my uniform was a white t-shirt with a brightly colored scarf or shawl that I made over it. But I just wouldn't want the kids to, like, catch and pull on it. So they've been sort of hanging out in my in my stash but you guys this is the last blank of the sock blank special let me see how close I can get the problem is that the light is right behind the camera so I'm getting a bit of a shadow but can we focus that close maybe not let me see Again, this looks, yeah, that camera isn't doing so well, but yeah. No, I think, I think that intentionally mismatched socks can be really awesome, awesome, awesome as well. Um, I just like when, so I did two at a time socks and, oh, I did make myself a pair of socks, but it was with a DK weight sort of like faux fair isle kind of yarn. And there I was like, they were slightly off and it was bugging me that I was not getting the exact colors and the exact stitches. So I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Um, oh, you guys are awesome with all these patterns. I'm glad, I'm glad I think that the chats are saved now. So that way there's like a live chat replay because you guys have all kinds of great information, go oh, information going on here today. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to have to pull out a sock pattern. I forget. I might need to buy some new needles because my, so the round needles that I use the most, I mean, I have double pointed needles that go down to size zero. Um, but I don't know if I have size ones that would work for two at a time. Uh, yeah, I, do you guys two at a time with two sets of needles or do you do one really long magic loop? Because my interchangeables only go down to size four. So I know I need smaller needles than that. But I'm curious what you guys, what you guys use. Tube socks are better for kids and they last longer. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have to look at my, like, fixed circular stash. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to hear what size needles you guys like to use. Like if I want to get zeros or, or what. Oh dear. Yeah. So what, what size is your favorite? You will convert Rebecca to sock knitting. Yes. Hey, listen, I mean, I think before I was saying, well, but also for shawls, because see, for shawls with a lot of lace work, my preference is to use like a nice semi-solid, um, because something this busy would not compete well with some subtle lace. Okay, so one set for Magic Loop and do Magic Loop. Okay, that I can do. I do like Magic Loop, or like, actually, <laughs> I'll do Magic Loop with like a 24-inch cable. Not, I mean, it's not quite magic loop, but I'll do like a modified magic loop towards the end instead of pulling out my double pointed needles. <laughs> um, uh, you use zero and one from Knit Picks with a cable? Okay. Yeah, um, I, I, that's the thing with, I really should start using the circulars more for that because I did, like I got my tiny double pointed for these mittens, which I mean, how awesome are these, right? I love that, and see there's no Kitchener on these ones because they've got the nice pointed top. 
but oh goodness i haven't knit i feel like that these are almost like a little felted now after like all these years but like my stitches on here were so tiny i did the mittens first and i did the hat later and my gauge was so much looser on the hat than with the the mittens but oh i love them uh okay zeros and ones i mean i think that in general i tend to let knit loose so i probably will want to use zeros or something but yeah but okay so you guys can see how cute how cute i am i'll put these on but this is why I like i haven't made myself any other mittens because these will just fit great and i mean i'm adorable right <laughs> Um, but I made these years ago, and this was the first hand dyed yarn I ever did. And I, this is all with food color, like food coloring and vinegar. And so the colors stay really, really, really vibrant. Oh, this is actually kind of nice because I'm talking to you. But then you can also see sort of the, the top of my hat over there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you guys are awesome. Well, I really appreciate you guys joining me for all of these live streams because I, yeah, I guess we've had four live streams for unraveling, which is almost as many dying live streams as we had. But ultimately, uh, I think that with the exception of some of the ones I was struggling on, if I wasn't chatting, maybe I could do it a tad bit faster, but I like being able to chat and hang out with all of you. It's a lot of fun. Um, I love stranded. I like designing stranded a lot too. Um, that's something that I'm a huge fan of. You use size one for normal, normal socks. You might go up to two for cables and you always use two for stranded. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are awesome. I really, really appreciate. Yeah. All right. Well, yes, I'm, I'm going to be signing off myself because I have big plans tomorrow. I'm going to be filming a really big Dye Pot Weekly episode, and I'm really excited because there is no more snow right now, so I will be able to get work done, right? Actually, okay. So this camera... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That camera, the color's better. The other one, oh, the other one was bugging me. Okay, there. <laughs> um, oh, I'm glad that you guys enjoy watching this. That is really, really great. And I, I just, I appreciate you guys joining me. And thank you again for the, the super chats tonight. Um, the, unfortunately, because I'm getting the, there we go. Thank you so much for giving for those of you that gave me super chats and again there's in the video description there are a lot of uh, a lot so yeah linda and suzanne thank you so much for the super chats tonight um there's another way that you can support me besides super chats and live streams is if you are interested in any of the products that i mentioned i am affiliates of a lot of these companies so i do get um, some commissions when when you buy them so yeah the I mean again the knit picks sock blanks are 20% off right now um, this these the the prices are all as marked there's no coupon codes or anything and unfortunately the bare yarns it doesn't stack with the bulk yarn discount so you wouldn't get 20% off and then 15% off that but it is still you know the 20% off is better than the bulk discount if you wanted to pick up some of the knit picks blanks to play with because they tie beautifully and are so so much fun um let's see i also have uh i guess some amazon links to the wilton color right system which i use a lot in the in the streams and some of the misto and the oxo dusting wand and things that i used and the two knitting machines that i used to make blanks so that is all present in the video description. So if you are so inclined to do some sock yarn shopping, since we've been talking about all the sock knitting, um, it would be it would be great. Um, by no more snow, I mean no more falling right now. No, we've got a lot of snow outside. There are mounds taller than me 
from the plows um, at my neighbor's house. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, I'm excited for some of my mint colored sock yarns to come in so I can over dye. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna have a mint chocolate chip episode. <laughs> no question about that. I just have to decide what kind of yarn to do it with. But yeah, I think that, let's see, hopefully next week I should have some random, maybe on next Wednesday, I'll have a random live dyeing session, yarn dyeing session, <laughs> hopefully. Um, we're supposed to maybe get more snow next week. Uh, so we'll see. Um, but then the week after that is Pesach, so the kids don't have school. Um, but yeah, I think that we've got a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of fun coming up and there's a lot of exciting episodes and dyeing videos coming out. There's another this morning, my first dip dyeing hundred percent silk in food coloring, that video came out and there's another one in another colorway coming out tomorrow morning. So that's what's there. But if you enjoyed the stream, please give the video a like, um, the little thumbs up. That is something really helpful. And if you haven't subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel already, please subscribe. Um, those are two things, those are two big, big ways that you can help out. Um, you know, I, I mentioned some other ways that you can support me tonight, but really liking and commenting on my, my videos is a huge, huge help, I think, overall. Um, oh, thank you guys. It's funny because sometimes focus. Uh, so sometimes there's a bit of a delay. And if you're ever curious about whether or not you are watching on a delay or if it's live, if you look at the next to the pause button, if you see a little red dot next to live, then you are up to date and you're watching the most current stuff. If the dot is gray, then you're watching sort of like the DVR. So you're still in the live stream while it's live, but you're not at the most recent point. But there is a, always a lag between like the real time what I say and then when it shows up on your end. So yeah, but anyway, thank you. Thank you everybody who joined in. And I had a blast hanging out with all of you and I cannot wait to do some, oh, you guys are so nice. I can't wait to do some more fun dyeing experiments with you all. And maybe we'll do some spinning soon. I think that It'll probably be a while, even though I still have some sock blank ideas. I think that I will hold off with some of those until someday when we do sock blank special three. <laughs> yeah, but good night, everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining. And I hope that you all have a wonderful evening. Bye, everyone. <laughs>